have lived in Poland for almost a thousand years, and they're still there. I encourage you to visit the new Museum of the History of Polish Jews. I, too, am a Polish Jew. Over the past 30 years, um, there's been an incredible resurgence of, of Jewish culture in Poland and of, and of Polish interest in Jewish culture in Poland. The Jewish Culture Festival in Krakow, arguably the largest Jewish culture festival in the world, is only one example of the many um, annual uh, Jewish cultural events happening all over Poland today. Um, besides Jewish culture, uh, artists and intellectuals have been tackling with uh, somewhat complex Polish-Jewish relations uh, over the years. I Miss You Jew is, again, only one example of, of the many controversial uh, and, and really interesting uh, artistic endeavors happening in Poland today. Jewish, every, almost every self-respecting university in Poland right now has a Jewish studies or a Hebrew studies department. And probably over 90% of the students who enroll in those, in those departments are not Jewish, or as I like to think, they're Poles who have not yet discovered they really have Jewish roots. Because there's been an incredible resurgence of Jewish life as well. Uh, Limud Poland attracts all generations of Jews, um, and it's probably most, the, the most represented generation is the third generation. Um, people who have discovered they really have Jewish roots some of them have re-embraced Jewish roots they didn't know about. Generation unexpected, we were not supposed to be there. Uh, the third generation began appearing after the fall of communism against, against ex following predictions about the end of Jewish life in Poland. My great-grandmother used to call me Meshugana. She had that one right. But at the time, I had no idea that it was in Yiddish, and I had no idea she was Jewish, and I had no idea I was Jewish. But years later, I developed a hunch I was Jewish, and then years later, it turned out I really was. But I'm not the only one. Uh, Jewish uh, community leaders, uh, activists, uh, a professor of Yiddish, none of these people knew until several years ago that they're Jewish, but they all had a hunch that they were. And that is what my project is about. Um, but how do we explain this? Where is the hunch coming from? Is it genetic memory? Uh, does it, in fact, extend beyond our own lives? Uh, can we explain it because we somehow hear the silence of our ancestors? Uh, I don't know. Uh, is it perhaps in the subconscious? Is it really within our own lives? Have we maybe, as a baby, overheard a conversation of our parents or grandparents that we've suppressed and it could, it, it could come out now? Again, uh, I don't have an answer. Is it transgener transgenerational trauma? Do we, in fact, um, have uh, trauma transmitted to us over generations? Uh, do we actually experience the Holocaust in, uh, in, in, in the following generations? Um, again, uh, I don't know. Or is it my favorite, the Pintelia? It explains it all, right? We all have the Jewish spark. If, if, it's, if it's not lit right now, it will, one day we'd be rekindled. Um, because weren't we all, after all, present at Mount Sinai, <laughs> where the Pentelid was installed in us, um, and uh, and that is the essential primordial thing that we all share as Jews, and therefore uh, we will obviously have a hunch and then discover that we're really Jewish. I really don't know. Um, in fact, we may all just be plain possessed. <laughs> right? There's a demon, there's a, there's a, there's a dibuk stuck between heaven and earth just trying to uh, give us secret messages about the fact that we're really Jewish. Um, for the time being, as I travel and interview uh, so many people that I keep meeting who've had a hunch they were Jewish and really are, I insist on calling it the Meshuggah effect. Um, and as, as long as I, um, the more I travel, the more I realize that um, it really, I would want to tell you that it's the, the working of a, uh, of a serious anthropologist, uh, but it really is by all means a selfish work in self therapy. Um, I, uh, the more questions that I ask myself, the more I obsess about the Meshuggah effect, the hunch, 
the more I come to think that the mystery lies somewhere in between, that it really doesn't necessarily have to be in the supernatural or the subconscious or even in the science, that it really is in the human connections and the interactions and the exchange of experiences. And it is really in the questions and the kinds of questions we ask, how we ask those questions and how we let others and what they tell us um, change who we are and essentially how we weave the stories, how we, how we choose to tell the stories and probably most importantly how we allow those stories to inform but possibly even change how we make sense of things.